Hello everyone, and welcome to the third part of my series on how to get faster at 3x3. This is going to be talking about last layer, and a couple quick things before I get going here is that my last layer is the strong point in my solve. It's the heart of my solve, and it's just the part that I have the most experience with. it. You know, uh, with. Um, my F2L isn't bad, but I would say that my last layer is a lot better. So I would say that I do have a lot of experience with this. My last layer averages about 3 seconds. So what I'm going to be talking about here is how I recognize each case and execute them as fast as possible without messing up. The first thing I want to talk about is when you insert cases, your last pair, with an RUR prime, you're going to need to know a few things. Is that you, when you're inserting it like this, you're doing a U, so each edge and corner is going to move clockwise. So the same way you insert the U. Another thing you want to notice is that everything here is going to be on the top layer. This bar, this bar, and this piece is going to be on the top layer. Knowing that, if you have a dot case like this, you'll know that if you insert it like this, nothing is going to be on the top layer except maybe a corner. This corner is going to be on the top layer because that's what you're touching. These two pieces are the only theoretical pieces that move when you're inserting it like this. So, knowing that, when I'm inserting this case, I know that I'm effectively pushing this bar back and moving this bar clockwise. So I'm hiding this bar and moving this bar. Now with that knowledge that these two pieces are the only ones that aren't going to be on the top layer, I can predict that this is going to be a square case. And it's obvious because there's, this corner is flipped. So this corner right here would not appear right there. So it's obviously going to be a square case. And I know that instant in a solve. So I answer that and it is. And that's not really so much, that's just a realization. And I can, you know, it doesn't matter how fast I'm going, I can see that very very easily and it's just a really easy case to execute and part of that is just you know I'll get that in two minutes about better algorithms same thing here when I'm inserting this I know that everything is going to move clockwise so I know that I'm pushing this bar back or this piece and this is gonna move clockwise it's gonna be a bar case but what kind of bar case is gonna be well I know that the, this edge is not here it's right here and so that's gonna be right there this piece, there's no yellow piece on the top, so that would theoretically, theoretically be right here. If the I can't really see the yellow piece, I don't look back here, so I just know that it's going to be a bar case. I don't look that far into it, but for this video, if it's right here, it's going to appear on the top. If it's in the back, you can't see it at all, it's going to appear right here. So, when I insert this, piece is right there. I know that it's going to be the night case, and it's going to be based on, and I can see from this angle, that it's not going to be the one where you do that kind of algorithm. I know automatically that I have to do U2 and then do it like that. And that's really easy to tell. And part of that is knowing what OLL you have at any possible angle. Now the last one is a dot case. Um, a couple quick things I'm going to teach you here. Try not to be afraid of dot cases that much. Um, I like to say that you shouldn't really be afraid of any OLL. Sledgehammer is nice, but when you have a case like this, don't go out of your way to get rid of the dot case. Just do the dot case. You know, if you hate it, just learn a better algorithm. You know, dot cases aren't that bad. And so, again, I don't really know what I'm going to have, but I can, from just from my knowledge, I know that it's going to be this corner. It's just going to appear here because I'm only moving these two pieces and there's no edge over here. So I can just insert this and I automatically know that coming down, can't even see this, and I'm going to do this. And that's a really quick OLL. So a lot of it, a lot of um, last layer is going to be recognition. So I'm going to talk about that right now. Now recognizing OLLs is very very important because the recognition time is, if you think about it, half your last layer. The other half is execution. So really, when you look at a case, you know that okay, I'm from this angle. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to insert it from the back, and I know this is going to be a cross case because knowing the method that the only pieces that are moving are you know for example these two pieces and I'm effectively pushing this bar and it's gonna be a cross case that's just no knowledge for this I'm inserting it this way and the same thing the only pieces that are moving are gonna be these and this is just the already made pair that's what I talked about the RUR prime versus the RU prime R prime because when you're inserting RU prime R prime the pieces that are moving are these pieces whereas the RU R prime the pieces that are moving are effectively the pair but it's you know already made so really what you have is what you're gonna get and you know the only thing that's being pushed is this so if you have yellow pieces here that's a good sign because you won't get a dot case last thing is 
um, knowing if you have a broken up uh, pair, knowing kind of what you're going to get. Now, I'm going to be join, joining this case with a R', R prime, U prime, R, and then I'm going to be inserting it. From that, I can just see that it's going to be either a bar or an L. It's not going to be cross because I can't really make it. So, what I'm going to be showing you is, you know, if I can pair it up and I can insert it, let me just see what case do I have and just easily do it. Next one. That's recognized. And the last one, I can see that this, is pro this isn't going to be like a headlights. It's probably, it can probably are either going to be pi or h based on the orientation of the edges. And C-O-L-O and u -Bone. Another nice thing about OLLs is that when you um, get OLLs and it's you, you get away from the whole recognizing the OLL when you're um, inserting the pair, is some OLLs will even offer you a little PLL, you know, leeway where you can see the PLL before you even do the ALG. Now you have to do a certain ALG to do this, but most of them are just the normal ALG. These three cases that are the ones I'm going to mention because these are my favorites and they don't take any really real effort to recognize the cases because you don't have to go out of your way before executing the OLL to realize what PLL it's going to be. Now the first one is this one. It's a little tougher, but two solid bars either means a JPERM or a PLL skip. This is going to be a PLL skip only because I set it up that way, but also this one, you should notice that um, this bar never moves, this bar never moves, and this bar never moves. This bar, or this, gets paired up with this. So when you do it, and you notice it gets paired up right here. So if you just notice the orientation of the pieces, you can tell exactly what that PLL is going to be, and you really don't have to look around too much to do it. Next one is this. Um, I'm going to introduce an algorithm for this because I feel like this algorithm is fantastic, and problem is it's, it's really only applicable to some people who can actually finger trigger correctly, and I'm just saying that if you do this algorithm, it'll offer you a lot of help and this is the only algorithm that offers this bar and this bar to not move at all. Now this is going to be a U-perm, not because I set it up that way, but because of knowledge. It can also be a G-perm or a, a um, what is it called, A-perm, because of this bar and this bar never moves. This is a solid bar, so it's not going to move, and this is a headlights. So here's the ALG. Really, really quick. And I'm going to post that in the description, like a U-perm. So that's that. Last one is this. This bar never moves, and this bar never moves. So, I know that these pieces are jumbled, so it looks like it's going to be an E-perm, but it can also be an R-perm based on this. This is like a partial headlight sort of thing, but it's probably going to be an E-perm because these two are opposites. So, do it. Yep, it's an E-perm. Now I'm going to move on to PLL recognition and tips. Now, OLL is mostly the hard because it's, you know, PLL is just you know, you do the ALG as fast as you can, but OLL you actually kind of have to pay more attention, and then PLL is just the last of the solve. Now the first thing I'm going to talk about is how to recognize the difference between the side R perm and the side T perm. I always had a problem with this, I'm not sure if other people do, but I'm going to talk about it anyway. How I figured this out, I learned the R perm from this angle, it just really, really helps because a lot of times I wasn't sure and I didn't feel like doing a U prime doing the left hand version, so I learned this ALG. It's also a really nice ALG, I feel like it's a better ALG. So what I do here is, if I see this, and I can sort of see this part of it, I don't even need to look that much because of practice, I see this, if this is solid and this is solid, then I know it's an R perm from that angle. If this is solid, if, oh, sorry, if this is solid and this is not solid, then it's a T perm, because I know that I'm switching these, and then the, I'm switching this because it's, you know, opposite. So this is a T perm. And then if you didn't already know this algorithm, I'll post it in the description, but it's a really nice algorithm. So it was bad, but... And it's really, there's nothing hard about it. So, and then, um, this one... Oh boy, the end perm. Nobody really likes the end perm. I don't know anybody who, you know, favors it, but honestly, I'm not scared of it. I'm not scared of any people at all because I learned algs for them. And one thing that Andrew Ritchie mentioned that I'm also going to reiterate... Um, don't look for the best ALG that everyone else uses, because if it doesn't fit your finger tricks, it's not a good ALG. Fit, find the ALG that fits your finger tricks and you can do the best possible. Now I'm not saying you know, learn a 25 move ALG just because it's easy to do. 
I'm saying learn the most effective alg that you can execute quickly and effectively and not have to you know strain yourself. I found this alg, I discovered it, and it's fantastic. I can do this alg pretty quickly, but it's too many moves. It's basically R U R prime U, J perm, and then finish soon. But I really like doing this for this alg. I like doing a Z and I do this. Really quick. And there's nothing hard about it. And I'll post that in the description as well. Basically what you're doing is you're doing the same alg twice. And that can also be applied, and I do the same thing for the other alg. It's a little bit tougher to do, but you know, they're both sort of in the same boat. It's better to do than left hand one. So there you go. And the last thing I'm going to talk about is, you know, there's not really much I can talk about about PLL. This is mostly OLL rather than the last layer, but PLL is, it's self-explanatory. I mean, the only reason that I'm so fast at last layer, I don't mean to sound cocky or anything, but I mindlessly just sit there and execute out. It's like if I'm sitting in class, I'll literally just do, this is an E perm. I'll just sit in class and I'll do this for, I don't even have to look. And after a while, it just becomes a lot of muscle memory. This is a new cube, so it's kind of hard to do. Whatever. And, you know, after a while, it just I get it down, and I can get the finger tricks down, and I can get that push with my ring finger down, and it's just practice. I can't double flick an A-perm. You know, I really wish I could double flick an A-perm, but I can't. So that just comes with practice. If you just sit there and mindlessly execute the out, that's all PLL is. It's just mindlessly execute mindlessly executing algs. F2L, you actually have to think about it. Now, Y perm is in the same kind of boat. You know, you just you do the alg and, you know, there's no pauses. But a lot of people, what they like to do is they like to pause here, do the thumb trick, and then have to regrip. But if you just sit there and do that, then you can just, with the thumb trick, you can just get right into the R and do it really quickly. So that's what, you know, that's what makes PLL easy. There's nothing hard about PLL. And I'm not scared of any PLL at all. That's a really bad cube. This is my main cube. You know, no owls, no PLLs is bad. And you just sit there and just practice, you will get better at PLL. I guarantee it. All you need to do is just when you're out in the car or something, just do this. You know, just sit there with the cube and mindlessly execute out. There's nothing hard about it. So, you know, you'll get better. That's self-explanatory. I'll see you guys in the next video. Stay tuned.